Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is BB and thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I really wanted to step outside of my comfort zone. I was watching a fellow YouTuber, Audrey Ember's video. She made a Dan Mace inspired video, inspired by his actual intro. If you never heard of Dan Mace, he's a South African YouTuber now based in New York and he makes awesome YouTube videos and just awesome content in general. And if you've never heard of Audrey, she's also a filmmaker slash content creator and she just makes superb videos. So here is Dan's intro. And here's Audrey's intro. I'm gonna share with you the process of making my own intro, so let's just get straight into the video. So the first part was finding my song, and so I used Epidemic Sound, because that's what I usually use. And so I really like Epidemic Sound, just because you can get different parts of the song and kind of like, tailor it to the way that you want. And so that's what I did. I kind of cut and paste and cut certain things out and just basically made the song that I wanted for my intro. And so here's my song. So the first part of Dan's intro is basically a time lapse of him writing out the word brew, which is a South African slang word. I'm going to be getting black like um, paper to write on because I want white paint. So this is the white acrylic paint that I'm gonna get. So like I said, Dan did his word brew and then Audrey did a flame. So I don't have like a logo or something that I say all the time. And so I decided to do my name because I do say that all the time, I guess, so I did BB. After I took the pictures of the words, I brought them into Lightroom and then edited them the way I wanted to edit them. Then I just brought them into Photoshop and then I just used the quick selection tool just to isolate them from the background and then save them as a PNG. So then I brought them all to Premiere Pro and then I put a speed duration of one second for each of them. And then I just kind of listened to my music and tweaked it as I saw fit. So the next part of Dan's intro is like the newspapers. They like are crumpled up and then it kind of expands, expands, expands and then He's actually kind of like a newspaper on top of his newspapers. Something like that. So what I did is gift tissue. I didn't want to do wrapping paper like Audrey did. And so what I did was I basically like tore up the wrapping paper and then slowly brought it together and crumpled it up. So I did the last frames first because it just made more sense to do that to me. So that's what I did. Then I just took them into Lightroom and edited them and then just once again, just used the quick selection in Photoshop and then saved them and then brought them into Premiere Pro and just basically did what I did with the uh, BB letters. So the next part of Dan's intro is him turning from that newspaper of him into like a coin and then that coin flying into like a coin dispenser or maybe it's like a slot machine. I don't know what it actually is, but I just know it goes from a coin into something. So I decided to use my iMac. So I found a picture of an iMac online and basically cut it out so that there was like no background. So it had a transparent background. And then I just got some Pac-Man footage since I used to love Pac-Man and then I basically like put it together. So I had the iMac and then the Pac-Man inside the actual iMac. So then I got a picture of myself and I basically took it to Photoshop and then basically like cut myself out of it and made sure that I saved it as a PNG so there was like no background. And then I basically keyframed myself in the actual game and it took a lot of keyframing, like I'm not lying, this took a lot of keyframing. So next one, the intro was basically some lips showing up and then there was like a glitch effect on it. And then with Audrey, she did an eye and I really didn't want to copy them even though I did like their ideas. So then I had to think like what makes me me, what makes BB BB, like it got kind of philosophical right there for a second. And so then I thought about like a self portrait since I do a lot of self portraits and they're like important to me. And so I thought like, why don't I just like put them within my actual iMac since I edit them on my iMac. So this took a lot of time because I decided to scale up the actual iMac. And so basically I had a keyframe that to expand in After Effects. And then I also had to do that with the actual self portraits as well so that there was like no space. So as it scaled, the pictures were like scaling with it and also like changing with it. So this took a lot of time. So the next part of Dan's intro was a hyperlapse. And I'm assuming that he did the hyperlapse in South Africa just based on the flag that was in the actual video. And so I basically found a building here in Minnesota that I really liked. This is my first time doing a hyperlapse and I only had time to do it one time. So I had to get it right, right away. So I think I did a pretty decent job though. So I put my camera on the tripod and then set my settings. So I made sure to put my grid on and basically lined up the grid with a point on the building. And then I slowly took some steps, took a picture, 
took some steps, took a picture and continued and continued and continued. So I don't have any footage of me editing the hyperlapse or editing the photos. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through what I did. So I had 250 raw files and I brought them into Lightroom and then I just edited them just the way that I wanted them to look. And then I exported them into a JPEG just so like the files weren't so massive. And then I just brought them into Premiere Pro and created a separate sequence. And then I just like basically made sure that each one was like about one second long. And then I exported them and made it into like a QuickTime movie. Just so like later on that I can just like bring them back into Premiere Pro into this video that I'm editing right now so that it wasn't bogging down Premiere Pro. For the next part of the intro, there's like a lot going on. There's like Dan turning and then the background also turning with him. And then the TV's on his face, but the hyperlapse in the TV also turning. It's a lot and I just know that it was a lot of keyframing and I mean a lot of keyframing. I created a background in Photoshop that was not so colorful just because I'm not a big person on color. So I found a picture of myself and then I just threw it into Photoshop and then cut myself out, making sure that I didn't have a background so it was a PNG file. I also found a motion graphic background and then I scaled up my Photoshop background so that when it turns, you don't see like any blackness behind it. So then I basically keyframed everything. So I keyframed the background rotating and then myself rotating and then the iMac and then the hyperlapse within the iMac and then also rotating. So through all of that, all that keyframing, all the Premiere Pro and After Effects and Photoshop and Lightroom. Here's my intro. Making this intro definitely challenged me. It challenged my patience. If you know me, I do not have patience. And so this intro basically is like little bits and pieces they basically contribute to make the intro what it is. I also learned new techniques. So I knew a lot of things I wanted to do in After Effects, but I needed to learn how to do them in Premiere Pro if I could, just because I didn't want to create so many like dynamic links between like After Effects and Premiere Pro. This also helped me affirm what I already thought about copying. Copying is basically what you make it. If you're just gonna copy and paste somebody else's work, then it doesn't help them and it really doesn't help you grow as well. If you really try and make a thought or an idea or something like an intro, or something like a video just like in your own way and just tailor it to something that you like and that's very specific to you, then I don't think there's a problem with that as long as you're like not copying and pasting. Also don't get trapped into the rabbit hole like, oh, I like colorful backgrounds, but then Dan Mace made a colorful background so I can't do that as well. So for part of the intro, I really wanted to do an eye, but then since Audrey did it, I was like, I don't want it to look like I just copied her stuff. And so I kind of got stuck a little bit, but I generally wanted to do an eye, but then I just used that as a challenge and I figured another way that kind of like made it even more personal and independent to like my own style. If you have any questions about a specific portion of my intro, definitely comment down below or message me. I promise I do not bite. I promise I just do not bite. But you already know the routine. If your fingers are feeling extra clicky, definitely like this video. And if your heart is changed, subscribe. Then go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.